key groups, oscillators, samples. Let's explore more of Falcon's basics and see exactly what is a key group, how we can map different oscillators to different areas of our keyboards, how we can uh, create overlapping areas in our keyboards using key groups and velocities. And uh, yeah, let's get started and explore key groups. To get started, let's just clear the multi. I'm going to the wrench here, to the menu, clear multi, and we're back to um, an empty multi with an empty part. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a few things just to get started. So first of all, let's go to the oscillators tab and get just a simple analog basic so tooth um, oscillator, just something simple. And when I'm dragging that oscillator to my mapping here, you can see that as I drag down or up, uh, I can expand or reduce the, the mapping here. So let's get everything all the way. And now this oscillator spans across my keyboard, right? So I can play something at any at any key. So let's uh, do something else now. I'm going to just clear this again. And now let's again drag this um, oscillator. And I'm going to do this very narrow thing here, just uh, maybe one note. Okay, so right now I'm mapped to just one note. Whatever I play elsewhere doesn't make any sound. And I can expand this, I can just do this, just drag right, I can drag to the left, and now I have more notes. Okay, so what's the idea here? The idea is that we have a sort of a key group mapping that is related to this particular um, oscillator. So this oscillator and any other oscillator that relates to this key group will play only on these notes. So now let's have a quick look at the tree view. And we can see that we have one layer that layer has just one key group and we have an analog oscillator here. So when I'm clicking this, uh, this analog, this analog oscillator, I can see some more information about it. I can see that it, the, the root is C3. I can see the, the volume and I can see some other information related to this uh, particular oscillator. But if I go up one level to the key group, I can see some interesting information. So I can see the, the low key mapping here. I can see the high key mapping. I can see the velocities. So what that information is uh, telling me, that information telling me exactly what we see here in the key group view, in the mapping view. I can see that this actually uh, related to each other, right? It's the same thing. So as I move the, the cursor here, as I drag and, and uh, get the key group to cover more or less notes, I can see that in the inspector here. So this is important to know. And I can do this manually by just double clicking here and I can say C1. And I can put here C5 and that's how it works. So that's a basic idea. That's something that you need to know about key group. So now just for uh, for fun, I can take another type of analog uh, synthesizer and just drag that one and put it here. So both of these are going to play when uh, when I'm playing any of the keys that are um, part of the key group here. So both of them uh, play. Right, now what else can I do? And I'm going to show you this real quick. So let's do something else. I'm going now to uh, just, again, clear the multi and I'm going to show you something cool. I'm going to do something with some samples. Let, let me just search some samples here and uh, hopefully we'll get something interesting going. So I'm going to my samples here, just picking something interesting. And let's find some something that can help us do 
one shorts and okay this one will be good so I'm going to drag this one here and I'm going to just get this one all the way cool so now when I'm playing any kind of note so this is a sampler so you can create your own uh, kind of sample based instruments you just need to map your samples and you can map them to individual notes or keys or you can span them across the keyboard it's up to you and what we we also can do and this is also very fundamental to key groups is talk about velocities so right now velocities goes from 1 to 127 so it's basically any any velocity that I'll play if I'll play soft or hard it will play the the sample right and I can do something else I can do this as I go to the upper uh, area or the other upper bound of this map I can just drag it down so let me show you that just going to drag that and you can see the mapping you the velocity so let's ju just drag this one to 1 through 70 so if I'll just play something hard so there's no no sound why because this key group is now just bound to between 1 and 70 uh, velocity but I can take another sample this one for example and put it here and again I can drag it all the way and again I can do this so I can have some samples play when I when I hit the keys hard and some samples will play when I hit the keys soft And I can have something in the middle that doesn't play anything. But I can also do something else. So I, I can do something like this. And now, let's see that. And let's have something overlapping here. All right, so now I have some samples playing. When, when I'm playing the low keys, some samples will play when I, I play the high keys. And some will play uh, in the middle here together. So now let's go back to our three view, which is really useful. And we see our new program here. This is the program that we've created that is made out of two samples. And when I'm clicking this one you can see some interesting information first of all we see that we have multiple selection in the key group and uh, that means that we have multiple key groups and we also have oscillators here which uh, indicates that we we have more than one so let's expand this and and what we have now is one layer and I'm not even talking about the layer here but below that layer we have two key groups and they have the the same name as the sample that I dragged in so this is what we have here and as you can see we have a sampler running that sample so as I focus on the different oscillators so these are actual oscillators that play this uh, sample or it's a samplers right and I can see exactly what's happening and I can see the key groups getting in focus here. So what else can we learn about key groups? Let's have a quick look at the key group level here in the UI. So first of all, we have a um, few things that are um, important to know. We have these controls and what you see here, the first one is just the parameters. This is the key group level so all key groups will obey whatever is uh, whatever is set here and we we can select the different key groups and as you can see here the, the name changes so if I'll just set this one to 
all the way to the right and the other one all the way to the left and you can see that this control here, the, these params are related to the key group. So I have two key groups and each one is just a, a separate entity and I can select them through the three view here. Okay, so now when, when I'm um, looking at this, uh, this control, you need to always be aware of which key group you're working on and the tree view is very very useful here so what else do we have so uh, except for params we also have effects and so i can have an effect that is related to this key group so let's add a reverb for example or yeah let, let's take a reverb and as you can see some of the some of the effects are not available at the key group level and I have some kind of a reverb here. And I can add more. Let's, uh, let's get something else. Um, just, you know, just for fun. I don't know. Let's uh, find something interesting. Distortion. Now let's focus back on the other key group. So right now I'm, I'm here, you can see the diffusion uh, reverb and the double drive. And when I go to the other key group, there's nothing there. So again, each key group is a separate entity and you can do whatever you want on that level and it will not affect the other key groups. So this, this is really important. Um, next, we also have modulation. So we can have uh, this mode here. And these modulations are a way for us to automate things. For example, I can have at the key group level, I can have uh, like an LFO or anything like that. So, so for example, what I can do is I can click the plus here and have an LFO. And, but this LFO doesn't do anything right now because it's not really related to any parameter. I can do that uh, real quick for you, but we'll cover the modulations and effects in a different video. So uh, let's just do that real quick. Um, what we can do is we can go and, for example, select the pan. And I'll just go back to zero here. Select the pan and assign uh, modulations, add modulation, and I can go to uh, internal modulations at the key group level, and we see the LFO here. And again, I'm, I'm saying we'll cover that in a different video. And now let's play. And you can see the panning here, but it's uh, again, We'll cover that later. So now what we see here is uh, is a bit messy, but if you look at the three view, it makes sense. We have one layer here, th that's the one here, and that's the name, the name goes after the, the sample that we dragged, and we have some uh, um, oscillator here or sampler. We have a couple, uh, um, couple of effects and we have another key group, which is uh, also running a sampler. So um, that's also very easy to navigate and you can see the value of the tree view. Now I can double click on the name here and call this one sample one. And there you go. So this is the, uh, the name and I can go to this one, double click and call this one sample two okay so you can see the names change here in the, in this view so um, let's go back to our key groups and talk about the controls here so we have some controls and we'll cover that also in a later video when we dive into more advanced um, applications but for now we can see that we have for each key group we have the gain we have panning we have trigger mode so the trigger mode is by default going to the on it means that when I'm playing any kind of note then it will immediately play 
or I can set this to the off, meaning when I'm releasing the key. So I, I can have some key groups uh, triggering when I'm leaving the keyboard while others will play when I'm hitting the keys. So this is an interesting use case and we'll cover that. And we also have trigger sync and let me show you how that works. Well, ba basically right now it will just play. So when I'm hitting the keys, we'll hear something. So it, it sounds horrible. We have to go and uh, just clear the multi and get something nicer. This one, for example. All right, so I can go and just play this one on the next beat. So what, what it means is uh, that we'll have a delay of a beat before we hear something. And I can have a delay of an entire bar. And this is really useful when I'm, I'm running for example, arpeggiators and things like that. We also have a, a exclusion groups, which means that um, we, we can have samples that uh, we don't want them to play together. For example, if we have uh, uh, drums, we don't want the, the hats to play together. We want to have a choke group kind of thing. So we'll cover that also in a separate video in, in some advanced use cases. And finally, we have LUDGE. Uh, and, and this means that every time we play any note, it will stay on. It will keep on playing as long as uh, we, uh, you know, continue to play. And it will stop playing when we hit the same key again. So let me show you that real quick. Let's go just clear the multi again and select just a simple basic saw tooth. All right, and now I'm going to hit the latch. And I can stop this. So that's the idea here. And uh, that's it. So what I think you should do in order to get this right is just practice. Try and create your own sampler, get some drums or try and get some some sounds that you have, even if it's something that you re record on your own and you can map it to different keys and create your own sample based instrument. And in the next video, we'll continue and explore more ideas and more things that are in, uh, in Falcon, like the different synthesizers or different samplers. And I'll see you then.